two states collaborated to investigate the discovery of a deceased teenage girl, known as Jane Doe, found in the Atlantic Ocean. Fishermen spotted what they believed to be debris on October 8, 2003, a few miles off the coast of Cape May, New Jersey. Upon closer inspection, it was revealed to be the severely decomposed body of the unidentified girl. NJSP crime scene investigator James Thistle mentioned that a rock crab gnawing at her inner thigh provided crucial information about the location of the body. Rock crabs are bottom feeders, so investigators know that at some point the body did sink to the ocean floor, explained show host Captain Lee. The United States Coast Guard, USCG, assisted state police in examining the body of an unidentified female found over two miles away from the Jersey Shore. The presence of a large metal chain around the victim's ankles and duct tape on her feet and hands led authorities to suspect foul play. It was thought that whoever disposed of the body didn't anticipate that she'd float to the surface. So far, according to Thistle, the body was their only clue, and so making an identification was crucial. Thistle said the Jane Doe's fingerprints were so pruned up on account of being in the water that traditional methods of finding a print could not be used. I basically took some saline solution and took a hypodermic needle, Thistle explained. I tied a string around the last knuckle of the finger and I was able to inject the saline solution under that finger pad and then roll it and get an identifiable fingerprint. The Jane Doe was ID'd as 16-year-old Kimberly Holton, a missing foster child out of Dover, Delaware, about 40 miles directly northeast of Cape May. About Kimberly Holton's disappearance, Holton's best friend, Destiny Andrews, told Deadly Waters they met on the school bus while in high school, citing Holton as the sweetest person you'd ever meet. The friend said Holton lived with her foster family, the Machetes, as well as a foster sister, Heather. Kim absolutely loved animals. I do believe she would have been some type of vet or vet tech, Andrews said. She helped animals because nobody helped her when she needed help. On that particular day, Lorraine Machette, the foster mother of Holton, notified the authorities about the teenager's disappearance the New Jersey State Police, responsible for the investigation following the discovery of the body in the water, collaborated with the Delaware State Police, DSP, to gather information regarding the child's history. How did Kimberly Holton die? Detectives investigating the case did not discover any obvious indications of trauma that could clarify Holton's cause of death. Nevertheless, a medical examiner revealed that she had suffered serious blunt force trauma to the head, likely from a fall from a considerable height, according to investigator Thistle. The most compelling physical evidence they found was the chain that restrained the victim's ankles. Thistle noted that each link of the metal coil chain had imprinted numbers, which ultimately guided the detectives to a particular Lowe's home improvement store located near Holton's home. During the course of the interview with the manager of that Lowe's in Dover, he was able to backtrack through the computer system that same length of chain, that same stamp, was purchased at that location, said Date Brown, along with clamps, clamps to the chain that was found on Kimberly's body, and also cinder blocks. The acquisition took place a mere 24 hours following Holton's vanishing. A timestamp on the receipt enabled law enforcement to promptly pinpoint surveillance footage of the transaction, revealing two unidentified males. Due to the poor quality of the video and the fact that the items were bought with cash, investigators reached out to the local media to publish still images of the individuals in the hope that the public could provide assistance. Detective Porter informed Deadly Waters that they received an overwhelming number of phone calls, with numerous informants pointing to Robert Brothers. Brothers himself 
contacted the tip line, confessing that he was with a certain Jacob Jones when the latter bought the chain. A second suspect comes into the picture in Kimberly Holton's murder, October 23, 2003, ten days following the discovery of Holton's body, Jones's father contacted authorities and claimed that Jacob Jones had died from a self-inflicted shotgun wound in his bedroom. Shortly before taking his own life, the suspect confessed to his parents that he and his 23-year-old acquaintance, Michael Kaiser, had killed Kimberly Holton. What happened in the case? The plane was at such a high altitude, when Kimberly's body hit the water, it acted like it hit concrete at 130 miles an hour and the cinder blocks disintegrated upon impact, said Captain Lee. This lack of knowledge on his part allowed the truth to rise to the surface, along with Kimberly, 